Um, what were you thinking at that moment? I was thinking of my son. It sounds weird, but that was the first that is the first thing that hit me. What did you do? I shot. Why? He he had my gun. He he struck me. It was obvious that he was uh it was obvious that that he was attacking me, that if he would have got the shotgun from me, then it was a, this is a life or death situation. And I, I'm gonna have to, to stop him from doing this, so I shot. Did he stop when you shot? He did not. No, he Do, did not. Can, 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 you, can you remember everything, every hand, every movement? Can you remember those things? No, I know that I was, uh, I know that I got hit and I know that I was, I was, Weaponry, weapon retention, we were talking about it earlier, yeah. with a shotgun or a rifle, it's called the push-pull method. And uh, when somebody's got a weapon, you're, you go to port arms and uh, you push out and you pull down is what you're taught. When this happened, I was in port arms, I got struck. And I remember when I came down, I got hit in the top of the head and he had the weapon in his hand. So I pushed and pulled still getting hit and did you get it free from his grip I don't believe I did I don't know I'm I don't know exactly when or where or if he continued grabbing but we were together we were locked up he was on that shotgun that do you remember where your bodies were moving I know that I was I know that he was I didn't know where I was at but I knew that he was on me I knew that I was I was losing this I knew that if I was getting tripped if I would have tripped or if he would have got a lucky strike on my head or if I would have have lost that grip on that shotgun that I've um, that I would have been shot or I would have been I would have been in serious trouble at that point while giving the statement I just killed a man I had blood on me still mm -hmm. I was the most traumatic event of my life I was I was scared to death I mean it was it was the most traumatic event of my life. I don't know anybody who wouldn't be scared or stressed or terrified or anything. I mean, it was it was horrible. I'm talking about giving your statement two hours later at a police station. You were nervous because you thought you were going to jail, right? No. I was, I gave him a statement. I mean, it, if you I would have... You don't think you're going to jail, is what you're saying? I was going through an investigation. I was following the investigation. So, you saw Officer Duggan's body cam, correct? Mm -hmm. Officer Duggan, the first officer who testified, his body cam. Yes, ma'am. All right, you were standing right behind Officer Duggan while all that went on, right? Uh, yeah, I guess, yes, ma'am. Okay. So, you've just shot Mr. Arbery three times with a shotgun, correct? Correct. He's dead on the scene, correct? Correct. He's unarmed, correct? He was. All right. And... Your father came up to you and grabbed you by the shoulders and went, you had no choice, you had no choice, right? You saw that? Yes. All right. You're covered in Mr. Arbery's blood. You go down to the police station, correct? Correct. All right. And at that point, you're in the safety of the police department giving your statement, correct? Yes. All right. You got all the time in the world, correct? Yes. All right. And Detective O'Hilly hasn't threatened you? No. Hasn't forced you to make a statement? He did not. Okay. And didn't promise you anything, nor to get you to make a statement? I'm going to look real quick. He did not. Okay. But you're telling this jury that you're all confused and you can't get the facts straight as you're telling the police about why it was you shot and killed a man. I was trying with my best ability, but like I said, under the circumstances of, of going through a traumatic event, that, this is the most traumatic event that I have ever been through in my life. I, I don't know how, I've never been through a situation like that. So the reaction, trying to go through and trying to be as as factual and detail, as, as detailed as I could, and then look at this transcript being scattered as it was, I could tell that obviously I failed attempting to try as best I could. Um, 
I, it just this is what he, this is what you got. I, I tried, and this is what happened. So fair to say, you never told Detective Nohilly nor wrote down in your written statement that you told Mr. Arbery the police were on their way. It seems that I attempted to say it in these words here. And at that point, Mr. Arbery turns around and runs back down Burford to get away from you, correct? That's correct. So at this point in time, he's running away from you. He has not threatened you. No. Hasn't pulled out a gun. No, ma'am. Hasn't pulled out a knife. He did not. Still arms at his sides. That's correct. And he's trying to get away from you. And I was letting him run away, yes, ma'am. You were letting him run away? That's correct. Wasn't it your intention to go around the block and cut him off and find him over on the other side? To uh, head him off and to see where he's located. That was my intention, yes, ma'am. All right. But you could have stopped right there and not done anything, right? Yes, but then immediately after is when I saw his interaction with the black truck and realized that there is something to my suspicions here and I would like to see where he is at when the cops come, which I assume that the police were on the way, that I would be able to tell them where he's at if they haven't located him at that point. So you're telling the jury that your whole intention was just to go ahead and follow Mr. Arbery, keep an eye on him, and to just tell the cops there he is? At that point, yes ma'am. It's true that your father, while in the truck with you, going down Burford towards that end, was yelling at you, cut him off, cut him off, cut him off, right? He was talking to me or was telling me, I don't know if he was saying cut him off or not. I know that he was saying there he is, that's the guy. Uh, after that, I am not sure exactly what he said. And at this point, you're still yelling at Mr. Arbery to stop at the end of Burford. I, I was not yelling at him at, at, on Burford, no ma'am. And at the end of Burford, you and your dad both got out of the pickup truck, correct? When he turned and started running down Burford, when he was away, when he was not a threat, if he was to, if he wanted to be a threat and he was gone past that, yeah, I, was, I got out of the truck, yes ma'am. When he turned and ran, running away is when I got out of the vehicle. Why in the world would Mr. Arbery be a threat to you? Because of when I was, was asking, when I asked him what was going on and recognized that it was the guy that I saw on the 11th mm -hmm. and Mr. Albenzi pointing and everything going down and realized that it is him and then how he reacted when I shined the lights on him on the 11th, uh, yeah, you know, he's, he acted like he did not want to be, he was obviously caught sneaking through the front yard he was obviously where he wasn't supposed to be, where he hasn't been several times, and then he reaches into his pants, and he has a gun, then that, I took that as a threatening gesture, and walked in the house. Now it's the same guy on the 23rd that I've just pulled up to that turned out my father was correct, people pointing down the road, the same scene that this happened 12 days prior, that yes, there was a possibility that he may be armed with that gesture, but he didn't show me that, and he started running down the road, I was no longer I was no longer under a threat if there was to be one, so I got out of the vehicle after my father got out of the vehicle to see what was going on and watch him. 